Hi, this is Ingrid Blackburn. Welcome to Creative Tips. This is how to use a card sketch, and this is the card that I made for the Mojo Monday 338 sketch challenge. And here you have my sketch that I made of their, their sketch for the week and the finished card. You can see that I use the two kind stamp set. I love those little dandelions. Um, I'm starting off with the inside of the card and I'm going to be doing a yellow dandelion on the inside and purple on the outside. So I'm stamping the stem with Wild Wasabi. I only want one of these two stems, so I'm going to mask off one of them right here by using just a little post-it note, leaving myself lots of place to write. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the two-step stamping, which is what this stamp set is primarily. Two images to make one. Foolproof. You can't mess it up. Right now I'm doing the lighter image of the two. I'm doing this two ways on this card. I'm using two different inks. Right there you saw Crush Curry and So Saffron. And then this is Crush Curry on So Saffron cardstock. This is just going to give a little interest to my butterflies that are on the front. It's the small butterfly punch from Stampin' Up. I love doing this. It's just a great way to add that little tiny something to a punch that would normally be very plain. So on the front of the card, I will be using two, the same ink pad uh, to create different tones. And I'll talk about that when you see that. Here you have the hexagon punch. I'm gonna make the banner flags. You, if you don't have a banner flag punch, I'm just gonna show you how you can do it yourself here. You can take a square punch and use the corner. I've got the hexagon punch here. It makes a nice, pretty even punch. I'm using the same piece. I did one and then I'm doing the same one as a template, if you will, by layering it on top of each strip. I just cut them the same width. I think they were 5 eighths of an inch by just about 1 and 3 eighths. These are the circle framelits. I'm going to create a circle for the front, taking the fourth to largest framelit there, using the magnetic platform. That thing rocks. If you don't have that, you've got to get it. It's awesome. Those things do not move. No more having to put post-it notes down to hold it in place. So once you've cut that with your big shot, you're going to just trim a little tiny bit off like you saw there on the front of the card. So I just took the edge off there with my trimmer and now make sure that I have everything perfectly layered because I, some of those banners are going to cover the left side. I stamped my image first on a transparency. This is actually a stamp -a jig sheet, but I'm not using it as a stamp -a jig This is just to help me get my spacing right on my circle. Now I'm just going to take that away. You see I'm not using the actual stamp -a jig I just use a transparency. So any piece of plastic would do there, and or solid plastic, like a transparency sheet. And those are my stems. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the two-step stamping, starting with the largest one. This is Perfect Plum. And you can see I stamped it off twice, so that's three different shades. So I have the lightest shade on the bottom, and now I'm going to go straight full on for the top image, and that gives you that great variation. I love two-step stamping. It's really hard to mess this up. I really mean it. When if you're nervous and a brand new stamper, two-step stamping is a great way to start. And this is one of the sayings that comes with the stamp set. It's your two kind. It's a very cute stamp set, very inexpensive. A lot of stamps for it. And just getting that perfectly placed. And then after this, we're going to go ahead and put our card together. Well, actually, first we're going to do some spritzing. Now, this is a tool that, you know, I don't think you can find in their catalog. I'm sure you can find it somewhere on the market, maybe at Michael's or one of the big box stores. It's just a color spritzer. If you Google color spritzer, you'll probably be able to find it. Um, maybe Simon Says Stamp has it or one of the other big stores has it. And I'm spritzing that. And then after I stamp this, I'm going to spritz this as well. I'm just creating my own background here and I'm stamping off so that I don't have a really dark background. I want it to really be in the background. I don't want it to take over the card and that's why I'm stamping off each time. And then I'm just going to use one of the other smaller images to fill in. Same thing, stamping off. You want to remember your paper is kind of like wrapping paper. Let your design go all the way to the edge. You know, your design doesn't end before the edge, so that gives it some nice continuity there. Yep. 
And then now we're just gonna do some color spritzing with an early espresso marker, same as the brown saying that we did on the front. Now uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a little tiny bit of adhesive there, use my finger to get rid of some of the tackiness. And I'm gonna place this on an angle. I'm covering up the right top corner and I just have the left corner laying at the edge. I'm gonna use my paper trimmer here. I'm gonna start with, and that's the wrong side, you'll see me flip it over in a second. Start with the solid side so that I'm going nice and straight. And this goes really quick, it's not difficult, and there's just a little tiny bit right there at the edge where I overlap that corner. And it's not completely adhered down. I'm gonna put everything on top of it first and then wrap my twine around. And that is why I don't have it adhered down. Of course, this is the second version. The first one I made, I, I put down and then I wrecked the card because I had to pull it back up. So, just so you don't do what I did. So there's that big focal point. When you use that color spritzer, you want to make sure to give it an opportunity to dry because you're putting so much ink on it. It's very easy to smear those. So you want to lay this to the side and maybe do your punches and other things. You can see here the spacing. I'm starting with the middle and then doing the top and bottom. This way I have everything perfectly spaced. If I go top to bottom, I will not get it spaced properly. It's just a little tiny tip. And now I'm going to peel that up and put some adhesive down. And I'm going to use the linen thread. And one of my signatures right here is just a crisscross because our focal point is at the bottom of the card. And I want my crisscross to be at the top. So that being said, it's going to be wider at the bottom and thinner at the top. Right there. Trim that off. And when you do this, you want to make sure you can see here, you've got the crisscross at the top. So it's the opposite of where that is. You don't want it to be in the same place. And it's important to run a little bit of adhesive over your string just so that it really stays down. Otherwise, it can kind of lift off from your card rather easily. So now you're going to be all the way to the left side. And I just want to make sure that it's straight. And there we go. And just put a little bit more pressure down. And now we can go ahead and attach this to our card. I'm going to put some fair amount of adhesive. We've got quite a bit of layers on the front, so I've got more adhesive than normal right there. And I have just a really thin border. It's just meant to be an accent. I think I did 3 eighths of an inch split by 2, so a little wider than 1 16th, and you can see the inside there. And this is what it looks like without the butterflies. I really felt it needed something, and that's why I put the butterflies on there. It was kind of a little too plain. So here you have uh, two little butterflies that are stamped, and I went ahead and cut that really small edge. That's the edge of those uh, Stampin' Up! Stampin' Dimensionals. I love their pop dots. And I have just a real skinny little strip. I'm just cutting it in two, one for each side. And then I'm gonna put a glue dot in the center, a mini glue dot, and that's gonna really hold that down. So the middle of my butterfly is nice and flush against my paper, but the wings, are kind of in the air, so it's almost as if they're flying. And it's a really cool look, but another reason you want the little um, pop dots underneath them is because otherwise, when you send that in the mail, they're just gonna be nice and flat. So if you wanna give it that 3D effect, you really kinda need to do it that way. Couple last minute pearls, and this will finish our card completely. I'm just gonna put a little bit, one on each butterfly, and then I like to do my little triangle. I guess it's kind of become one of my signatures too. Just a triangle of pearls somewhere. You gotta remember the law of threes. You always wanna plant things, or the odds. You always wanna um, plant. You always wanna <laughs> uh, put things down in threes or fives. Something odd, it just gives it a little bit more symmetry. And so here you go, there's your final card. I really love how it turned out. I think it's rather cute. I really love their sketches. Mojo Monday does a nice job. I right, thank you for joining me on how to create a card with a card sketch. Here's a close up of the final card as well. And of course, 
If you want to see anything else or see the dimensions or the step-by-step -step tutorial, please visit my blog at thecreativegrove.com. You can go ahead and click that right there. It'll take you there. But first, be sure to like this video and definitely hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel. That way you'll get lots of creative tip videos as well as you know anything new that's going on in the paper crafting industry. I've enjoyed having you here today and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.